name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rise to join together in the singing of the intro for this St. Stephen Sunday. Praise. 
praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. among them to bring them back to the Lord. These testified against them, but they would not pay attention. <clears throat> then the Spirit of God clothed Zechariah, the son of Jehodiah, the priest, and he stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, Why do you break the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has forsaken you. But they conspired against him, and by command of the king they stoned him with stones in the courts of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king did not remember the kindness that Jehodiah Zachariah's father had shown him, but killed his son. And when he was dying, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in the first article of the Creed and its meaning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, 
eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. The epistle reading, the second reading, is from the book of Acts, chapter 6 and 7. St. Luke writes, And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes. And they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council, and they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. And the high priest said, are these things so? And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law is delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that on so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth. 
from the blood of innocent Abel to the blood of Zechariah the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May be seated for our, our hymn of the day, printed in your worship book.
Amen. Christmas celebrations always find themselves full of disappointment. The turkey turned out dry. The dress doesn't fit. Somebody, again, was missing because of divorce, death, COVID, stubbornness, or those old family grudges from 50 years ago that no one remembers except the person who was missing. The gifts we received were lackluster, or the ones to whom we gave gifts accidentally gave away their disappointment when we saw their faces as they opened the wrapping. It shouldn't be this way, but no matter how hard we try, no matter all the planning, no matter all of the pre-planning, no matter how much we try to make everyone in our household feel welcome and taken care of, providing for them exactly the food that they wanted because you know that they don't like turkey, and so you made a ham as well, or maybe even a pizza, because that's what they do on holidays. But no matter how hard we try, we can never make it perfect. We can't live up to the ideals of those Hallmark movies that some of you enjoy watching this time of year. Our cheesecakes never turn out to look nearly as beautiful and perfect as the ones from Martha Stewart or from the Food Network. Our lives are messy. They're complicated. And that tends to make today not only a return to the doldrum and mundane workaday world, but often one that leads people into a higher depression. God bless you this morning. For those of you who have come to church this day expecting to find our beautiful white Christmas frontal on the altar and your pastor wearing his white stole this morning, you might be tempted to think that the church herself has given over into the depressing spirit of the world. But I can assure you she has not. In fact, in the martyrdom of St. Stephen this day, we find a very real and satisfying answer to our disappointing lives. They will not last forever. Our problems, without exception, are caused pretty much by one thing and one thing alone. <coughs> it's sin. Either our own sins, because we won't let things go and we continue to force ourselves on other peoples, or the sins of others. But it's always sin. So also that first Christmas was less than ideal. Because of sin, not Jesus' sin, of course, but Mary's and Joseph's. Their family and friends who lived in Bethlehem who slammed the doors on their faces, or as some of us are wont to do, we never open the doors and we try to turn down the lights and hide while our friends and family are standing outside wondering why we're sneaking around behind the couch in the dark. <laughs> it was less than perfect. I can't guess, I can't make myself believe that Mary was happy that night when she had to lay her firstborn son in the feeding trough of a donkey 
and sheep and cattle. But his rejection by men and his suffering had already begun. Sin would do its worst to Jesus. It would end up driving him and Joseph and Mary out of Bethlehem. It would turn him into a refugee. And it would mean that the baby boys, those toddlers in Jerusalem, would be the ones who would be slaughtered. Our sin would tempt him. Our sin would hurt him. It would take away those he loved. It would cause his good friends who had spent three years with him to betray him. And finally, it would murder him on a cross outside of Jerusalem. But that's it. And that's why he came. Sin would do its worst to him. He who knew no sin became a sinner, guilty for sins he didn't commit. In our place, as our stand-in, as our substitute, as a sinner, because of that damning guilt, Jesus died for you. But that's it. There is no more. Sin had done its worst and it had placed God in the grave. But then sin and death were spent. There is no more. Sin is done. Death is dead. Jesus is alive, back from the dead, out of the grave, victorious over Satan, who can harm us none. God is alive as a man, as we confess in our opening hymn for this day. And as a man, as one of us, Jesus ascended into heaven, paving the way for those who believe and trust in him above all things. So Stephen then that day could stand before that hateful, violent mob without any fear. He knew that they couldn't do anything to him. They couldn't kill him. God was on his side. He had given his life for Stephen's. He had promised him eternal glory in the Father's presence. And if it was time for Stephen to go, if his suffering witness was done, then God was going to bring him home. But not a moment before. And we must remember that in this world control that we are always seeking, whether it's by medicine, or how we eat, or how we take care of ourselves, or all of the other things that we try to control within our lives so that we can try and extend our lives just a moment longer. Your life is in God's hands. And he will not let you live a moment longer or a moment shorter than he has already deigned. Stephen sees through the dross. The Lord had lovingly disciplined him so that he would not mistake this fallen creation and the stuff that we measure ourselves by in this world, be it success or popularity, 
an abundance of stuff for what God actually desires for him. Stephen, Stephen's expectations are realistic. He gets it. Because they come from the Bible. Stephen knew that there would always be men and women in this world who would resist the Holy Spirit. He knew that there were going to be people in this world who will always commit evil acts. Even some of those closest to us. But Stephen also knew. Stephen also confessed that even though there is evil in this world, even though there are always going to be unbelievers in this world, God is still good and still loves us. And the sacrifice of his son on the cross is enough to forgive even that evil and scheme. Again and again, men and women reject Jesus. And again, and again, and again, the Spirit reaches out to them with grace, forgiveness, and peace. But don't miss out on the profound fact of Stephen's dying prayer. Saul is no longer at odds with Stephen. Now, Stephen and Saul are brothers in heaven, fellow martyrs in Christ, who have come to their reward. Who would have ever believed that day as Saul stood there with the coats of the men who were throwing stones at Stephen, that he would ever become one of the greatest confessors of Christ in the history of the world. That's exactly what happened. Stephen's prayer was answered. The Holy Spirit brought Saul to faith. Paul was saved by grace. And don't you ever believe that someone is too far away from God's grace that he can't change their hearts? God is good. He does not desire any sinner to be damned. Whether it's dry turkey, Missing batteries? Family squabbles? Cheesecakes that don't really look like cheesecakes all that much? Still hurt! And so do rocks. But they won't last. They're not going to hurt forever. <coughs> I can guarantee it. Your time, too, is going to come. But know this. There will be no disappointments in your true home. Jesus was born. He died. He rose that he would bring you there. And here is an answer to our disappointments. And strength. For this December 26th. Believe it. <coughs> for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and protect your heart and mind in true faith to life everlasting. Amen.
I now invite you to please rise as we confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Preserve your church, O Lord, and her ministers. Let your word be treasured and your commandments honored, that your church and her congregations may prosper. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Your will is for the good of your people. You gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Preserve our families, especially the children of Christian parents, that they may grow in the knowledge of you and of Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Behold, O Lord, the princes and rulers of this world. Do not let those who serve you abandon your house. Turn the hearts of those who serve false idols to heed your truth. Give peace in our time that the confession of the Incarnate Savior may have free course. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. O giver of all that is good, grant your healing and support to all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially for Jeanette, Peggy, Stacy, Diana, Vicki, Lillian, Jennifer, Hilda, Lori, Vic, Jeff, and Larry. Give them also the gift of your grace to accept and bear their crosses with faith in you, that finally they would be prepared to depart this life and receive the gift of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Holy God, your Son stands at the right hand of your majesty, powerful to be present and active with his church, scattered throughout the world. Give your blessing to all who receive his true body and blood in the sacrament, that in this communion we may receive his pardon. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your servant, St. Stephen, whom your Son has received into his glory at the right hand. May we, your people, imitate him in faith and love, to speak your truth with boldness, to forgive those who sin against us as Christ forgave his persecutors from the cross, and to fall asleep in him. And when our last hour comes, let us be born into eternal life and receive the crown of life for the sake of him who was born into our flesh to redeem it, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
in the offertory. Who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in our closing hymn.
what a weekend. I'm not sure if the candles feel like me or if I feel more like the candles. <laughs> but a blessed and merry Christmas to you and to yours as well. Um, hopefully the Lord has again blessed your Christmas celebration with your family and friends, or maybe it was just you this year, but we pray that the Lord has blessed you again as we celebrate his birth. Just a couple of things to remind you of over the next couple of weeks. One of them is next week we will, actually it's this coming week, I don't know what week we're on anymore anyways. Um, coming up New Year's Eve, we will be having a simple divine service that evening as we bring in the new year at 7 o'clock. So hopefully you can join us for that before you have your big blowout at midnight or whatever you're planning to do. Or if you're probably like me, you're going to end up just going to sleep at some point and waking up the next day. Um, so keep that in mind, 7 o'clock on New Year's Eve here at church. Um, also a reminder, we are going to be having a joint service with our brothers and sisters in Christ from... Um, Christ in New Baltimore, and then hopefully some of our friends from St. John's and Rayton Township may also be joining us as well um, as we celebrate the Epiphany of our Lord, which is actually the 12th day of Christmas. So don't forget, over the next 12 days, you can still wish everyone that you meet a Merry Christmas. The 12 days do not happen beforehand. They actually are the 12 days that begin on Christmas Day happen afterwards. Um, and so we will be having our final kind of Christmas celebration on the 6th of January here at Good Shepherd. Pastor Harrison from Christ is going to be preaching. Hopefully he remembers. Um, and then afterwards we're going to have a little get together with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ afterwards downstairs in the parish hall. Um, just a little bit of time of fellowship to spend with them. So hopefully you can be able to be here for that. That will be a divine service as well as we celebrate our Lord's Epiphany. Don't also forget, you can pick up your offering envelopes for 2022. Linda made sure to get them out onto the table back in the narthex. So if you haven't grabbed them over the last few days, um, please make sure you grab those. Um, also a reminder, we won't be having Bible class on Thursday might be sleeping, I don't know. Um, so just remember that. So then when we get together that next week, we will continue on in the first chapter of the book of Revelation. So hopefully you can come and join us for that as well. Am I forgetting anything other than a couple of other things further out? Nope. Yep. What? What did you say? Bible class. Oh, Bible just class. After. And we're going to do something just a little bit different today. So please come and join us. But don't use that as a reason to be like, oh, I'm going to go home now. <laughs> <laughs> come and join us. Hopefully we'll have a, a good time. Um, a little bit of laughter last week. I don't know what was with all of you. You were just like, woo. Anyways, um, <laughs> was it me? It was me, apparently. It's always me. It's always the pastor's fault. <laughs> nope. Even when the pastor doesn't know it's his fault. It's always his fault. Anything else? Okay. Merry Christmas. And Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.